Hey everybody, just doing a quick couch video. I noticed there was some uh, confusion about Pro Builder 6 and how that's working and it's terrible or not. Um, understandable, sorry for the confusion because a lot of things changed. Let's talk about them and I think you're gonna love it once you see it, but uh, yeah, I get, the, I get the initial friction. So doing a quick uh, video from the couch to uh, to make, uh, make that clear hope. So on the left-hand side, we have Pro Builder um, uh, basically 5.2. 2.2, not basically, it is. This is using Unity, I don't know, 23.2, I guess. And then in Unity 6, I have PB6. So that kind of works out and naming is weird, but hey, if it works, six and six, it works. So both of these projects actually have ProBuilder already installed, but this is immediately showing the benefits because over here in ProBuilder 5, you really have no idea that it's installed, right? As a person who just installed this using it, I have no idea if I can do anything. And you can't actually until you go to, you have to know and you have to look it up in documentation or whatever. If you haven't already found this, go to tools, over to Pro Builder. You've got to pick out of all this list Pro Builder window, and then that opens up. And now you've got this big old thing in the way. Um, I have to move that around, put it somewhere. Uh, I've also got this UI, which in my case has stacked itself behind this for no particularly good reason. Uh, I'd have to learn. I think actually that's more my fault because long ago I had set that in the preferences, but you've got to know that. And let me just fix that for this video. Didn't really intend that, but um, where in the world is that even? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to because I don't even remember. It's under somewhere, maybe project preferences. This thing is really annoying to move around. I promise I'm not doing this on purpose. Just kind of worked out this way. Okay, cool. So now I can at least see these. Um, the last problem with this is now that it's here, so I can do a lot of things. Maybe there's, there's just a lot showing here. Most of them can't actually be used. And then if I click into any of these options here, they're showing up right away. Now it suddenly seems like things are broken, right? I can click and select this, but my tools don't actually work on it. There's all sorts of weird stuff that happens with the old Pro Builder. Let's move over to the new one and see how that works. Sounds very uh, as seen on TV. Um, but anyway, so again, this one, I've installed Pro Builder, done nothing else. Right away in the tools overlay here, there's now a new section. And this is something that I had a previous video out about. I really wanna make sure that certain people know Everything shown here for PB6 is totally available to everybody else, asset store, etc. So please ask me if you have questions. Everyone should use this. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, you can now put global tools right here. Actually, not really now, but it's a pattern we're trying to work out. So this is for creation mainly. So you've got like your manipulation tools, usual stuff up here, right? To move around the transform and whatnot, and then any component tools that appear from that. But more importantly, um, the creation tools. So with PB immediately installed. Main thing is I don't have to go looking for anything at all. I can say I'd like to create. So click this or click hold and pick a different thing if I want. Um, and then just draw that shape out and I have it. And Unity will compile a shader and that won't be bright blue anymore. There we go. Uh, you can also, as you used to be able to do in PB5, hold shift and your last used shape will just appear and then you can just click and place that. So if I wanted to do something like, uh, let's create some some cones, so I might maybe do some little spiky bits and I can just hold shift and that's gonna also, whoops, that's gonna set, oh, I did something wrong. Oh no, well, uh, there's gotta be at least one bug in any demonstration, right? So let's uh, ignore that, delete it, and pretend it worked. Anyway, point is, um, creation is right here. You don't have to search around for menus, nothing's in the way. So let's try out creation over on the PB5 side, so an older version. So you look in the panel here, which is again, taking up a good bit of space, even though you're really only using a few things, click on new shape. Now you have to go all the way down here and pick the shape you want and properties, and you can again draw that out. Uh, if I wanna add another shape, I have to go back and click it again. I can hold shift to place it at a spot or something, but all these extra little clicks to do things. Uh, and it keeps kind of pushing you out of that. And you have to keep redoing it to add more. Uh, once you have that there though, then you can start editing. So again, I hope that's clear versus over here, it's just uh, much, much faster to use and much more clear because you always see what tool is active versus over here, once you activate this, you kind of lose your tools and things don't really make a lot of sense uh, if you're trying to follow any pattern. So let's edit these. So again, I can do something like just click on this directly and dive into one of these modes, but it can get me into weird situations where like this camera just doesn't show any tools. Um, 
Otherwise, it'll work on these objects, but you have to know that. So if I click here, now we can start editing these and do things, right? So that's fine. Let's look at how it works over on the PB6 side. So I can never enter those modes unless they're actually useful. And that's a really important thing that's part of the new contextual tooling system. So it means that I can't get locked or stuck in a mode wherever my, uh, where did my sunlight go? Have I hidden it for myself? I don't know. Is it behind here? <laughs> okay, that's weird, huh? Maybe a, a bug also in preview. So anyway, uh, I can select these and they're always going to work, right? doesn't matter. Uh, as soon as I select this here, any kind of PB object or anything that, that supports an editing tool or a tool context, I think it's called an API. I like calling it edit mode better. You'll see it appears right up here at the top. So again, these are all your tools. These are always, this is everything that controls in-scene interaction. Basically, you could, you could consider this as. So whenever you want to know what can I do with something in the scene, it's always going to be here for you to use. And again, asset store folks, custom studios, etc. you can easily make use of this. It's really nice. Um, so I select this and it says, hey, you can edit it. You know immediately that it's editable. And that's really useful because I'll show real quick if I have something like just a regular cube, which I can easily apply the, the Pro Builder mesh to, I mean, sorry, uh, texture to, so it looks the same. And then over here, same thing if I create just a regular cube, and let's say it had the same Pro Builder material on it. Over here, there's no way to know, like, why can't I select faces? Why is it, like, it feels really broken, right? Versus on this side in PB6, I select it, and it just says you can't do that. It's not a PB editable object. I can make it PB editable. We'll talk about that later, but for the moment, it isn't, so it won't give me broken, unusable tools. So we're just making sure you have all the right stuff at all the right time. Okay, so I've got this. Two things come up. Um, you can edit the you know, the, the shape in, in this sort of way, setting exact size, that would make more sense if it was something like, ooh, let's see, uh, where's my stairs? It's always the best option. So I can set, you know, stair, step count or something, right? That's sort of the procedural editing option. Or I can use this edit mode. That's again, gets you right to these things. So activate that. And that's really similar to Blender dropping into edit mode, you can think of it as. And you can even set the same hotkey if you want to, as Blender has, if that's what you're used to, or whatever other DCC. So now we can use these, and now we're starting to use the toolbar, so the tool settings up here. And that's going to allow you to choose how you're interacting. So whatever tool you have active, these are going to tell you what you can do with that tool and how you can use it. So that's just the tool settings. You'll notice when I turn this off, it goes back to not showing those extra options because there's no purpose until they're actually on and they're usable. Let's look at that on the PB5 side. So once again, uh, let me go back to an object I can actually edit. Get out of this, I'm gonna delete this extra stuff so it's not in the way. Okay, so I select the right kind of thing. I activate one of the modes here and let's say face mode is probably easiest. I can now work on the faces. I don't have options up here, right? They're missing for some reason. On the other hand, once I figure it out, I can learn some of them are in here and for some reason they're colored blue, right? So I can choose whether a drag select to do certain things here and whether it'll select hidden things or not. And, and then there's some other like actions here and I've got more things, there's just a ton going on. And some of them are grayed out and whatnot, right? It's, it's pretty weird. Uh, some of them will actually affect the entire object versus just what I have selected, which is super crazy. Um, it's not great. So. That's that's a whole mess. And again, this thing is here in the way all the time as well. So let's go back over to PB6 and talk about that. All right. So again, in the edit mode, got the stuff. I've got the options. I can you know change to using local or element space and turn quickly turn on and off the uh, the toggle for show hidden. Super nice. Blah blah blah. Or select hidden. Uh, and then if I want the actions. So before again in PB5, this is big long list. You got to figure out the right ones. Now, while well, I'm in face mode, so as soon as I right click, and this is one of the awesome new things in U6, is we finally have a right click menu in the scene view. Uh, I know, just uh, flying into the future, right? Uh, so with this, you can pick just anything you want. So it says, hey, you're, you're working on this particular thing, these are what you can do with it. If I'm in vertex mode and I select some verts, now I have the actions that apply to vertices. So I don't have to wonder about what works or what doesn't. And I'm not getting weird stuff that might apply to the entire object accidentally or something like that. So we used to have, oh, all the time, bug reports. Someone would select a face in PB5 and then do, uh, let's say, like subdivide. And then boom, the entire object gets subdivided. And they're like, what? And, you know, that is, that's not great. They just say, no, you want the other subdivide, the one that's like down here, subdivide face. I can't even remember where it is because I haven't used it. There we go for so long. And that does just the face, right? And that's that's just not good. So now let's say I did want to do an entire object action. Well I exit 
back to and you can of course you can set keyboard shortcuts so you don't have to be using the, the clicker up here although it is nice that it's always there um, and indicating to you what mode you're in so in object mode so i'm working on objects now i can right click and I see Pro Builder Mesh. So this is the component that is controlling this object, right? Uh, like a cube doesn't have a Pro Builder Mesh, but it does have a transform and a mesh filter, and there's actions for that. So here I want to do any kind of full object action. So I just right click and I can see, hey, these are all the things available to it. So again, it's, it's only showing you exactly what you can do. So you never have to worry about mentally filtering things out and go down to there, subdivide object, and I'll subdivide the whole thing. Um, can't see the difference because I need to turn on that. Oh man, come on, Unity, get those get those shaders ready. Uh, do 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 do. That did some crazy subdivision. You probably should not use that on a stairway. Uh, also, it's showing triangles at the same time. There we go. Thanks, shader compilation. Okay, uh, cool. So we, I mentioned before that yes, you can make basic things into Pro Builder objects. So again, this is a lot easier than before. So. <clears throat> If I had, I will create a regular 3D object over here, cube, hello cube. Uh, I'd have to figure out again somewhere in this list that I can click the Pro Builder Eyes, still the best named thing in the in the entire tool set. Uh, click that, and I got some options and I can do it, right? So Plunk, and now it becomes actually Pro Builder editable, which is nice. Over here, again, that's just a right click option. And because it has a mesh filter, I have Pro Builder Eyes. It says any meshes, I can do that too. And now it just, is a PB object, so ooh, there's a bug. That should have immediately became editable up here if I click off and back on. Mm, something's broken. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll have to go uh, bring that up to the team. Hooray. Uh, always happens uh, right in the middle of a demo. Um, okay, cool. Anyway, uh, let's see. What else is left? So those parts, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do want to mention that, so we did a, let me go back to better view mode here. Um, we took this in, in a sort of front pass. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, we made the big obvious things uh, match to the new stuff. So the instant access to tools and the tool options and all the editing and, and, and selecting and such here for actions. Uh, oh, I do want to say actually, it was a really good one. Um, let me finish this off first though. Um, so we did that just to make sure we could get the basics done, but there wasn't uh, time to do the other bits and plus they're really complicated. So if you still need to access things like uh, the material editor or the crazy UV editor and such, they're still in here. So under editors, you've got stuff like uh, UV editor and this is, this is a big mess that we need to work through. Oh no, I have a meeting coming up. Uh, okay. Um, so I'll finish this up quickly. Uh, yes, a lot of the things are still in the editors, but the main workflow is all right here, direct, contextual, and easy. And let me get to that last point real quick. So if I create, let me create something a little simpler just so I don't have to work with that crazy mesh there. Just another cube real quick and go into edit mode and select an edge. And now I want to bevel this or something like that. I can go down to that one. And we have, oh, that should have popped up by default. Come here, come back, there it is. Okay, wow, good to do a video, catch all the bugs. Okay, um, <clears throat> so right here, we've got a actual preview. So if we turn that on, now for once, finally, uh, again, flying into the future, right? Uh, you can preview your action, which is fantastic. So I could do that and not have to, uh, you know, click on, off, on, off, on, and off like you did in the old Pro Builder. So for example, I would select this and I would go to wherever the heck bevel is in the list. I've got to find that, do this, find this thing, um, set it to who knows what. <laughs> Click and go, ah, oh, that's not really what I wanted. Control Z, try something a little different, click, etc. Quite annoying, um, not great. Uh, now, real, real, real nice and easy. This is one of the best parts. Um, we have live preview as an option because some of the things just don't really work uh, very well. Uh, the performance can be an issue, but this was so awesome. We wanted to just make sure it was available at least as an, as an option and you can use depending on how awesome your PC is. Uh, cool, okay. Um, I think that's it again. Sorry for initial confusion. I really don't think we got the comms out well enough on this. Um, but the exciting bit is this all works really nice and contextually and smoothly now. You don't need that big, crazy editor anymore. Um, so it's great. You have all the right things at the right time. Um, should be faster for everybody. Let us know now that you see this, if you have any extra comments or thoughts. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. So cool. Enjoy. Thanks for checking it out.
and I'm gonna go off to some other meeting apparently. Okay, see y'all later.